Welcome back to Sakima's Ridge Homestead. Today I need to fix our deer feeder so I thought I'd bring you along and show you how I do that. And we also have something uh, we're kind of excited about for the tractor that I want to show you a little bit later. But first, take a load of this. Hello and welcome to our channel. We're, we're glad, glad you're, you're here. here. Yesterday before I went to work, we trimmed all these branches off of this big pine tree here because we knew this morning we were going to go get eight more round bales for the horses. So right now we've got eight new round bales plus the two we already have. So there's ten round bales there and the price was right so they're actually going to deliver us eight more tomorrow. But look at this yard. Imagine you can hear my feet squashing. This was grass a couple hours ago. It is so soft and so nasty. This is just from bringing the tractor around. I had the truck and trailer parked, parked right in here. So I was bringing the tractor around, picking the bales up and bringing them around this way. Uh, the bales were sitting where the four wheeler is sitting now. We wanted them kind of out of, out of sight a little bit a little more protected, so we moved them up underneath those pine trees. Thought that might be a little better location for them. It'll keep the sun off the tarp a little bit and uh, kind of help keep the weather off of them a little bit more. And we're obviously not done tarping yet. Uh, there's going to be three more bales here on the end. This row is going to be full and this row is going to be full. Um, we'll end up with uh, 18. We'll have 18 round bales total plus what they have out in the pasture now. So that's going to definitely get us through this year. We'll have some on stock this summer in case, uh, in case we have a dry summer or uh, a dry fall and we, we need them. And depending on the price next year, I mean, we couldn't beat the price on these. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll last us for a while and, and save us some money going into next year. But I just wanted to show you this nasty muddy yard. It's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, that's, that's you know, standing water there. I'm, I'm not sure how we're even going to fix this this year. It's going to be uh, going to be quite the uh, chore. But enough about the mud. Let's hop on the four wheeler and go back and fix that deer feeder. This is a Moultrie deer feeder we bought a year or so ago. I mentioned in another video we we just feed the deer. We don't we don't hunt or anything. We just uh, try and supply them with with some extra extra food. This type of feeder they call a dinner plate theater or theater feeder. Uh, the corn just drops down onto this plate and the deer can walk up and eat it. Well, uh, a couple mornings ago, um, I'm getting ready for work. I'm looking out the, looking out the door there and I, there's two deer back here eating it and there's a squirrel running around on the ground because the little animals will clean up what they drop here on the ground. I looked out a little bit later and the one deer was kind of heading off that direction past the pine trees and the squirrel scampered off and the one deer was still here at the feeder. I looked out again, and there was something big and black on the ground under the feeder. And it, thinking, well, that's that's too big for a squirrel. Um, looks like it could be big enough for a raccoon, but I don't think a raccoon's going to be out this time of day. And I kept looking at it and kept looking at it. And then I realized I'm looking right through here at the deer's shoulder. She broke the dinner table right off the bottom of it. There's uh, three pins on the bottom of this feeder and three slots on the top of the dinner plate. You just stick it on, turn it, and it locks in place. Well, she must have pushed on it and broke two of the tabs. So, uh, like Paula said, this is why we can't have nice things. So what I've done, uh, there's a, like a strength rib on each corner. I've drilled two holes on each side of that rib. What I'm going to do is just stick this back on there where it belongs. I'm going to take a drill driver and some self-tapping um, sheet metal screws and just reattach this to the bottom of the feeder. So with six of these screws in there, I think that should hold it in place. Plus, it still has the one factory tab helping to hold it, but I don't think it's doing a whole lot without the other two. And two more. Okay, that's 
seems to hold her pretty good. And if she decides to push on that again, hopefully it won't uh, it won't break it again. Uh, these are available individually. I didn't uh, I didn't price one yet. One of the big peacocks, actually two of the peacocks are back here. They do come back and get corn as well. But uh, what I've done in a temporary measure, we've got this old tray. This is what we fed in last year, but of course it gets it gets water in it and the corn gets wet and so forth. So we thought this would be a better feeder for them. But I stuck this back out here either yesterday or two days ago and filled it. As you can see, they've eaten all but about two kernels of corn out of here and cleaned the ground up pretty good. So I'll throw this back in the four wheeler, put it back in the garage, get this filled, and then I'll take you out to the garage and show you what we've got for the tractor. So stick around. I think you can see there how it, how it fills this dinner plate up for the deer to eat off of. And as you can see, four of the peacocks, well, actually three peacocks and one pea hen, that's our old mama hen, have made their way back here to uh, get some of that fresh corn. So now let's go to that garage and I'll show you what I was talking about. Okay, in a few of our other videos, we've mentioned that we've purchased a New Holland TC33D used tractor. Being an older tractor, the loader is the old pin-on style bucket, which great for a bucket, but it doesn't do you a whole lot of good for other implements. So what we've done is purchased a kit for making our own quick attach, a new bucket, and a set of pallet forks, and bale spike. So let me show you those items. Yeah, right now I've just got it standing on end, but that is a 60 inch skid steer attach bucket for the front of the tractor. We purchased that from Everything Attachments. I believe they are down in North Carolina. It took about a week or two to have it shipped to us. They do do free shipping, which is awesome. So that is the new bucket. And then from Titan Attachments, or I believe their website is palletforks.com, we bought this uh, skid steer quick attach kit. It comes with the two uh, quick attach locks couple pieces of tubing that you can add here if you need to for spacing and a long piece of tubing which welds in between for spacing. And also from Titan Attachments we bought this kit here which is a, uh, a carriage I believe you'd call it and on that carriage it has a two inch receiver you can put a, a trailer ball in to move stuff around which is cool. Not sure if we'll ever use it or not but it's nice to have it. It also takes pallet forks, so that pallet fork will lock on there. These spaces, you, you put the fork on right there and let it swing down, and the bottom hook goes inside, then you can slide it you know, down this way. It's got locks on the top. There are two, well, I'll talk about the forks in a minute. <laughs> and it also comes with a bale spike and the two bottom spikes. So the bottom spikes go in these two holes, and the top spike goes in this hole, so with the pallet forks off, you can put the bale spikes on it and use it for lifting bales. As of right now, we're using the pallet forks we have, which is working, but it'd be more convenient to have a bale spike. Now the forks. Titan will ship for free as long as you ship it to a business. So I had it shipped to where I work. I'm fortunate enough that they allow you to do that. The, uh, the skid came in Monday, which had the carriage, the bale spikes and the uh, quick attach kit on it, but no pallet forks. So I called Titan right away and said, hey, I received the item and there's, there's no pallet forks on it. And of course she asked, did, uh, did you tell the driver they were missing? And, and I informed her that we're a drop trailer location. So the driver just comes in, drops his trailer and takes an empty. So there, there was no driver there to inform. So she said, let me look into it. She got back on and said, I'll send you new pallet forks. Well, two days later, the pallet fork showed up. They had handwritten FedEx labels on them, so I'm assuming that FedEx lost the pallet forks from the skid, realized what they were, wrote some hand shipping labels on them, stuck them on, and they showed up at work. Two days later, 
the bucket shows up and that one fork shows up. So apparently FedEx has again misplaced one of my forks. So I now have two sets of forks, so I'm gonna have to get a hold of Titan and see what they wanna do about that since they've sent me two sets by accident basically because apparently FedEx misplaced that set and then has apparently also misplaced one of these forks. So I'll let you know what happens with the fork saga. Um, as soon as we start doing this project, I'll show you how we, we fabricate that uh, quick connect bracket so we can uh, swap between the bucket and these uh, forks or the bail spikes. And also we're thinking about getting a grapple down the road. So this, this should help. Um, the tractor is a wonderful tool but you're limited to that pin on bucket. So I'm hoping this is a good choice to get this quick, quick attach adapter on the front. So like I said, when we start that project, I will show you how we do that. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today while I fix that deer feeder. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you didn't enjoy seeing that mud like I don't enjoy seeing that mud. And like I said, we'll keep you informed as we uh, do the project on the front of this tractor. So please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, thanks for watching, and have a good day.